Hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Phillips here and welcome to another episode of Pickup Vlogs. Well, since the holidays and Christmas has come and gone, I figured I'd take this opportunity to show you guys a lot of the stuff I got over the Christmas season. I mean, just look. Look at all this fucking shit we have to go through, so... I'm all set, and without further ado, let's get started on what we got this year. Well, the first thing I actually got for Christmas was something I usually go through a lot of, and that is another set of headphones. These are by Polaroid, so I have no clue what the quality are on these damn things. But this is just a nice little gift from my parents since I go through so many headphones, which honestly, guys, like, I go through headphones, like, every six months. Now, a really cool present from a friend of mine who I met at DTAC is this sucker. It's a VR helmet. Um, I have tried this thing out and I love the shit out of these things. So my friend got this for me. The only downside is, is that it doesn't work on my phone and I have to update my phone before I could use this damn thing. But I'm overall looking forward to, uh, basically trying this thing out and trying out some virtual reality. Now, one of the biggest things I asked for this year for Christmas is a lot of stuff I need for my video and film projects. And the first thing I did buy is actually up here. I don't know if you can hear this. That's a brand new microphone. It's a rod microphone that my parents got at a local pawn shop, which by the way, young filmmakers out there, if you're looking for cameras and equipment really dirt cheap, go check out pawn shops. But my parents bought this awesome microphone and so far I absolutely love it. It's a phenomenon to work with. But of course, when it comes to filmmaking, you need a lot of filmmaking tools. And one of the first things I got was a new SD card. This thing has about 64 gigabytes on it. The largest SD card has about 32 gigabytes, but this is a nice little present I got from my parents, which is gonna help me a lot in saving memory on my videos. And of course, to send videos left and right to the people I needed to send it to, and for the people on YouTube, I got a brand new Darth Vader flash drive. Uh, this thing has eight gigabytes worth of memory. So normally what I do is when I post videos is that I'll edit it on my tower and then I'll transfer it to a USB to my laptop and then send it onto YouTube. The one I currently use now is a little Duracell USB which only has about four gigabytes. So a double eight gigabyte uh, flash drive and especially with <laughs> With Darth Vader is an absolute great present for me, and I love it. I love it. it, it it's it's like the movie where Anakin, you know, he's cut in half, and this flash drive it didn't get the high ground, I guess. No! And of course, making films, you always have to have a tripod handy. So my parents got me a. A Polaroid tripod. Uh, I have no clue if Polaroid is a good brand or not, but so far it looks pretty damn impressive. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think of Polaroid. 127 centimeter tripod features multiple purpose locking pad heads, makes unit ideal for camcorder users as well as triple brace center column and all this kind of stuff that's on here, but I actually did need a new tripod. Now normally I use one tripod, but for like if I'm doing A and B camera shots for films, uh, another tripod always comes in handy. And by the way, much like headphones, I go through tripods like crazy during film productions. Now actually, believe it or not, today as I'm filming is Boxing Day, and I actually went around did some Boxing Day shopping here and there, and I had to go to my local Henry's to get an adapter so that the mic could fit on the camera, but I actually got something better. As you guys can see here, I got essentially a camera stabilizer, and it's a portable one, so I can connect my camera, I can connect the mic to it, and I could actually do some great handheld shots with this. In fact, I'll just show you right now. Hang on a sec. So as you can see, this is what it's like to use this uh, kind of tripod thing, and it's absolutely phenomenal. I love the shit out of this. You get a really good grip with it, and you get really good camera angles with it. But I'll be honest, guys, I kind of spoiled myself today on Boxing Day because, um, I got this. <laughs> It is a Cameron VS800 Pro video stabilizer with matte box and follow focus. Um, this baby is amazing. Um, essentially what it is is that it's basically something you add to your tripod or you can have as kind of like a steady cam for uh, certain shots. It's got a focus adapter which works like a bunch of gears and it actually connects to this focus thing that I'm actually doing right now, and I don't know if it's picking up right now, but it kind of does that shit, and it's actually got its own device on this kind of stabilizer thing. It's also got one of those cinemascope dish things you see on most motion picture cameras, and it actually helps block out the lighting in front of the camera so you can get better shots. Now, the best thing about this thing, and I can't show it off right now, but it's got these two joystick grips that you can grab at the bottom, and you can basically mount the camera like this, and the mic, and everything, and also this stabilizer does connect to this thing, and you can basically hold it around like a goddamn bazooka. 
and it's fucking amazing. So I've already opened this baby and tried it out, but it's fantastic. It's almost like working with a large Meccano set. And for any young kids out there, ask your parents what the hell a Meccano set is. But I absolutely love this thing. And the guy gave me a really good deal because originally this thing was $400. He gave it to me for $225. So that's a fucking steal for this thing. And if you guys want one of the best camera stores in Canada, it's actually Henry's Camera Stores. They may be a teeny bit expensive, but if you play your cards right, you can get a really good deal for some great quality stuff. Now this is interesting when it comes to making films because my dad found this in his old drawers in the basement and he came across these which are basically leaf filter samples. Now for anybody who doesn't know, my dad actually did a lot of shows back in the 80s and he would always have these kind of filter things to check for lighting. Now it's interesting because you get all these kind of gels for like lights and shit. You got purple, you got blue, you got, you know, green and all this shit here. But I guess he would always go around on the set with these things to check the lighting on certain angles. But something interesting I found out about these things and it's kind of a cheap novelty effect is that if I put these gels right in front of the camera, I could get a much different filter on here. So I figured what I might do is sometime down the road, if I need to do a day for night shoot, I can just stick these in front of the camera lens and it'll do the job pretty well. But yeah, it's just these awesome light filters. Uh, thanks dad. But of course, if you're making films and editing films, you need the power. And that means you need this. It's a power strip, my parents got this for me and I haven't tried it out yet, but it seems like a pretty powerful power strip. But I guess whenever I need to film stuff outside or whatever, this will come in handy uh, whenever I need power. Speaking of power, you got Nintendo power. I actually got a bunch of Nintendo merchandise, including this awesome t-shirt. You got Mario, Bowser, Luigi, Waluigi, Wario, Toad, uh, Donkey Kong, Yoshi. You got them all in this t-shirt. And um, I'm kind of a fan of Nintendo myself, but this is actually a really nice shirt. Again, my family got this for me and it's actually a really nice t-shirt. And of course, with Nintendo comes a bunch of Nintendo video games. Now, there's a couple here that are actually kind of cool. The first one I actually got from my mom because she went to a local pawn shop. She got me Bart's Nightmare on the Super Nintendo. I have yet to play this game, but from what I heard, a little critic did a little video on it that didn't really do so well. But yeah, I haven't played many Simpsons games. Like, the only one I've honestly played is Simpsons Road Rage on the Game Boy Advance, and I kind of liked that one as a kid. And actually, I did remember playing the Simpsons game a while back. I think I need to take a look at that thing again. And of course, what's after Super Nintendo? None other than Nintendo 64. And that's why I got <laughs> Namco Museum 64. I have no clue what this game is, but it's pretty much got Pac-Man on it. So I guess it has something to do with Pac-Man, but it seems like an interesting game. I'll definitely take a look at it when I get a chance to play it. And I don't know how, but my sister found this and gave it to me as a gift. And it's <laughs> Star Wars Rogue Squadron on the Nintendo 64 in the box! This is one of those games I remember fondly on the Nintendo 64, even though I was a PlayStation person. Because funny story, when I was a young kid, I used to get a lot of ear infections and I used to be incredibly sick. So I remember going to a children's hospital and I remember at the time we got to watch Toy Story on VHS and I remember playing the shit out of Rogue Squadron when I was a kid sick in the hospital. And did anybody ever notice back in the mid 90s that there was a Nintendo 64 in like every hospital wing. They were at a bunch of McDonald's, they were at a bunch of kids' daycares, and they always seemed to come in a game booth, which, oh my god, I would love one of those things. But for me, the Nintendo 64 has always been what I call a hospital console, meaning that almost every hospital had one of these damn things. And for me, honestly, Star Wars Rogue Squadron is a great game for the system. If you haven't picked it up yet, do yourself a favor and check it out and play it. It's a lot of fun and honestly is a lot better than Shadows of the Empire, let me tell you that. And speaking of Star Wars, we got a lot of shit here to cover. The first thing I got was a Star Wars 2018 calendar, and it's interesting because on my wall here, I actually have a Star Wars 2017 calendar, so I figured I'd continue the tradition by having a 2018 calendar that has nothing but Star Wars. As you can see, it's got a lot of illustrations on it from the original trilogy, and honestly, this is actually a pretty nice calendar, and I've been already writing down kind of uh, what's happening uh, in the schedule. As you can see, this is mostly the stuff for the King Kong reviews, so look forward to that in March of 2018. 
I also got the Entertainment Weekly for The Last Jedi, which just came out. It's actually a really cool magazine. It gives a lot of insight on the making of Star Wars The Last Jedi and a bunch of interviews with the cast and crew. But yeah, this is actually a pretty nice cover. It's got Poe Dameron and Laura Duran from the Jurassic Park movies who is in this movie, by the way. Now, for a lot of people, The Last Jedi was a mixed bag, and some people consider it to be a major disappointment. But nothing can be as disappointing as this! <laughs> This is a Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace commemorative kind of uh, behind the scenes photo album thing. I have no clue what this thing is, but it's just got all this cool stuff from when The Phantom Menace came out and it's just got all this like kind of behind the scenes info, a lot of great pictures and stuff. So this came out when the movie came out. My sister got this for me and it's just going everywhere right now. But it's got a lot of images from the film and I just kind of felt it was a cool little novelty item to have from when the movie came out. Actually, funny enough, my first grade teacher said this scene where the battle droids just start forming in an army was actually her favorite scene in the movie. But for me, honestly, I actually felt The Phantom Menace was the better prequel given it was actually using real sets and props while the story was complete shit. For some reason, I just feel like quoting Mr. Plinkett now. Star Wars The Phantom Menace is the most disappointing thing since my son. Email me if you want a pizza roll. But wait, sir, there's a Musa! I got me a Star Wars undershirt. Uh, this is something I could probably wear over the summer. It's just basically a simple undershirt, kind of a sports shirt with the Star Wars logo on it, which is kind of cool. And I've been wanting to get more Star Wars shirts for some reason, but this is actually pretty cool. My family also got these for me, and I guess they were just kind of there at the local dollar store. There's a couple of uh, Hot Wheels Star Wars diecast models. You got the TIE Fighter and the Ghost from Star Wars Rebels in here, and these will actually come in handy when I do model shots for the Star Wars reviews. And because I'm a Star Wars fan and I love the action figures from the original Kenner line. My mom got me these. There's a bunch of uh, Star Wars action figures from The Force Awakens. Funny enough, these are actually being sold at local dollar stores for like $2. So for anybody who's wanting to get a couple of The Force Awakens action figures, go check out your local dollar store and you'll find a ton of these things lying around. You got Finn, who is in his awesome Stormtrooper outfit, which is good because I basically need more Stormtrooper figures. You got our new Han Solo, Poe Dameron, with his awesome battle armor, and I guess all these figures have some sort of battle armor for some reason, but overall, not a bad figure. And I got a TIE Fighter pilot, which I've been needing because I have a couple of actual TIE Fighter playsets that actually need pilots, so there you go. And speaking of sci-fi directors, I got Legend! <laughs> Um, this is Ridley Scott's Legend. This is the Ultimate Edition DVD. I actually found this at my local Value Village for about $4. And I hear this DVD version of Legend is actually kind of rare because it comes with the UK theatrical cut and the US cut, which pretty much use knockoff music from the never ending story. But funny enough, I've never seen this movie and I've wanted to for such a long time because I hear it's supposed to be the inspiration for The Legend of Zelda. And it's got Tom Cruise and of course Tim Curry as the best goddamn devil ever. This is a movie I've been wanting to watch for a long time and I can't wait to check it out. Now this is actually a really cool gift because my sister got this for me in England and it's a Robin Hood hat which is fucking hilarious because let me be honest guys I am a huge fan of the Robin Hood myth. My personal favorite movie of the Robin Hood story is the Errol Flynn version. Next to that is Disney and then after that the Russell Crowe version by Ridley Scott who did Legend. But something interesting I thought I'd bring up is that my sister actually went to visit England for a couple months and she went to Nottingham Castle and actually picked me up one of these. So I guess Robin Hood is a big kind of merchandising deal out in Nottingham Castle as well as Sherwood Forest I imagine. My sister didn't go to Sherwood Forest, but hey, this is actually a really nice hat. It's got a little arrow and everything. It's like something right out of the Disney film, and I freaking love it. Rob? That's a naughty word. We never rob. We just sort of borrow from those who could afford it. Borrow? <laughs> Boy, are we in debt. And just taking a short break from franchise stuff, uh, I pretty much got this little package, and what is in this package is something I've been wanting to get for a while. If you guys are buying DVDs and Blu-rays, you of course need 
A Blu-ray player! Yay! I finally got one because I've been mostly sticking with DVDs, but I finally got a Blu-ray player, and since I've been buying a lot of Blu-rays lately, I figured I might as well get one. So this is a really nice present from my parents, and I absolutely love this thing. So thank you, Mom and Dad. Now moving on to DVDs, I got this! This is Batman the Animated Series Season 4. I have Season 1, but I don't have Season 2 and 3 yet, but this came from my aunt, and she was very gracious to get me this, and I love Batman the Animated series so thank you so much Auntie Lala for getting me this. This is a this is the last season in the Batman animated series line next to Batman Begins and Justice League but it's overall I hear a really good season so I will definitely check it out. Now speaking of DC I did get a couple other things. I got this hoodie that is the DC Trinity which you have Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman and speaking of DC team ups I don't care what people said, I love Suicide Squad. I thought it was a really fun movie overall. Margot Robbie killed it as Harley Quinn. She was absolutely amazing. And I thought the shirt was actually kind of cool. And speaking of Harley Quinn and Batman, I got a Batman. Oh God, this is a Batman hoodie. And I don't know where my family found this thing, but it actually is super comfortable. It's just a simple Batman kind of morning robe and it's got the whole Batman logo out of it. it. It's the bat robe. And man, I can't wait to wear this thing. It actually feels really comfortable. I'm gonna wear it right now. Yeah, I know, I'm a grown ass man and I'm wearing a Batman hoodie. In fact, fuck it, I'm gonna wear it the rest of the video. And switching to DC over to Marvel, I got a Captain America summer shirt. Uh, Captain America has just been kind of eh for me. I mean, overall, I think he's a cool character, especially with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But honestly, I think this shirt is kind of cool, so I love it, and I'm probably going to wear it sometime. Speaking of blue, we got the Blue Jays! Yay! But yeah, guys, since I'm from Canada and I'm from Ontario, I'm actually a fan of the Blue Jays. And I got this nice little sports shirt to wear with it. And I also got a t-shirt of the Blue Jays, so I guess whenever I go to a game, I can finally wear this. Now, moving on to a couple of DVDs I got, I finally got Season since five and six of South Park. I am a huge South Park fan. I've been since I was a kid when I used to sneak around watching it. And I got season five, which I guess was the first introduction of Jimmy. And probably one of my all time favorite seasons is season six, which has Butters as one of the most recurring characters. You got Tweak standing in for Kenny. And you've got some of my favorite episodes of the series, including Free Hat, where the boys have to go stop Steven Spielberg and George Lucas from altering their films. And my personal all time favorite episode, The Return of the Fellowship of the Ring to the Two Towers, which is essentially them spoofing the Lord of the Rings, and they're all dressed up and doing this role play and everything. It's pretty much the origins of the Stick of Truth games. So if you guys are wondering where the kids got the origins for all their costumes, it's in the episode that spoofs Lord of the Rings from season six. Now, if you guys do not know, one of my favorite soda drinks is, of course, Coca-Cola. Although I can't decide between Coke or Pepsi, it's honestly kind of tied at this point. But since Coca-Cola is essentially the Christmas drink, aside from Bailey's, I got this! It's a Japanese Coca-Cola t-shirt, and this thing is actually amazing. I actually might wear this to the next anime convention, and I'll just drink nothing but Coca-Cola, and I might just give people Coca-Cola. In fact, you know what? I want a Coca-Cola anime. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible, but it would be amazing. Coca-Cola new. And with Coca-Cola comes Coca-Cola cans, and for the most part, I've mostly been drinking Coca-Cola Zero, and I actually love this stuff, so my parents got me a bunch of Coca-Cola for Christmas, so thank you very much. In fact, fuck it, I'm just gonna have one right now. This is essentially my equivalent to Popeye spinach. <laughs> yeah, get some Coca-Cola in your spinach. And back to DVDs! I got Dragon Ball Z Season 5! This is the Orange Box series, which I know people have mixed opinions on, but honestly, I found a bunch of these and they were dirt cheap, so I finally got Season 5 in my collection, and I am gonna enjoy binge-watching the shit out of this show, because this shit was my childhood. And speaking of Japanese products... <laughs> I got the original Dragon Dagger, y'all! Now, when I was a kid, I was a huge Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fan, and I actually used to have two of these until I threw them out, and actually one of them broke.
But when I went to the December Toronto anime convention, there was a dealer's room there, and one of the booths was selling the original Dragon Dagger, and I got it for pretty damn cheap. I know most people are mostly going for the Legacy Dragon Dagger, but I'm more on keen to having the original toys I grew up with as a kid, and I absolutely love this thing. The Green Ranger has always been one of my personal favorite Power Rangers, and I've always loved this toy. I call upon the power of the Dragon Zord! But when you're a kid of the 90s and you're watching Power Rangers and all sorts of Japanese cartoons, you need a fuckload of sugar, man! I don't know why I have this in my room and I know this shit is gonna kill me. Oh, fuzzy pieces. Oh, that shit is so good. Watch me, guys. Seriously, I'm gonna start turning into Wolford Brimley. Hi, I'm Wolford Brimley, and I'm here to tell you about diabetes. But of course, I've saved the best three items for last. As you guys know, I am a major King Kong fan, as you guys have probably seen from the season finale of my show. And I couldn't go on with Christmas if I didn't get a few King Kong items. The first thing I got, obviously, was Kong Skull Island on DVD. I honestly really liked Kong Skull Island. It was honestly probably the best movie of the year. And if you guys want to see my review of it, link down below. But overall, guys, great movie, worth picking up on DVD and Blu-ray. And this is honestly the best movie of the damn year for me. But if you're not interested in watching a movie, why not read a book? So that's why I got the novelization of Peter Jackson's King Kong. Funny story, I actually used to own this book, and I lost it at a local camp, and unfortunately I've never been able to get it back, but thankfully my parents actually got me a brand new copy of it. And if you guys want to know how the book is, it's honestly a really good expansion pack to the movie and actually explains a lot more of the character's backstory. I don't know where the hell I was in this book when I first read it, but I might as well just say fuck it and read it again. But honestly, one of the best things I got for Christmas overall, and the final thing I gotta show you, is this. This is a vintage 2000 Confrontation t-shirt from Universal Studios Florida in mint condition! Now if you guys want to know my thoughts on the Confrontation ride at Universal Studios, my review is down below. And I overall absolutely love the ride and funny enough, I saw this t-shirt on Kijiji, which for most Americans out there, Kijiji is essentially the Canadian version of Craigslist. And this shirt was on there for a really good deal and I've wanted to get it for so long and I I told my mom about it and she was kind enough to get it for me and I absolutely love this shirt. It is pure nostalgia to me, especially for confrontation. In fact, one of the things I actually thought when I first saw this thing was that if it had the banana scented breath that stayed in the essence of the attraction when this was sold. No, no banana breath. But even if it doesn't have the banana scented Kong breath, it actually is a really nice shirt. As you can see, it's got Kong's face on there. It has Kong up there says Universal Studios and it's got like all the New York skyline kind of in the shirt itself and I love this on the back it says no wimps <laughs> but yeah overall guys this is an amazing shirt I'm gonna take care of the shit out of this and who knows you might see this in later King Kong reviews I might make it a thing but yeah guys overall Christmas this year was a lot of fun and I can't wait till next year but of course I want to hear from you guys. What did you guys get for Christmas? Anything in particular that you were really excited for or something you actually needed? Let me know in the comments section below. And that's all I gotta say for now. So until the next video, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. This is Big Jack Films, signing off.